talk a little bit about uh, cybersecurity. Yeah. Not a topic that I know a lot about, but um, anyway, it seems, to be, it seems to be pretty popular. And I think as we were doing our homework on you, there were a couple of points where uh, either speeches you'd made, you say, this is one of the few things that keeps me awake at night. So curious to get your view on how Vanguard's addressing cybersecurity, how well you actually can safeguard against. Yeah, so um, it's a, uh, one of the things I think you guys saw in, in when you were doing the homework on this, um, we've been very involved in a lot of discussions in Washington around you know, the regulation of investment management firms and financial services overall. And I think many of you have been following the debates and discussions about what are systemically important institutions and what are systemically important activities and so forth. And you know, the government is really paying a lot of attention. Um, we had the um, opportunity to testify um, just about the whole process and uh, toward the end of um, the questioning and you know it was all around you know is an S&P 500 fund a systemically important vehicle you know is it going to cause widespread systemic risk I'm hard pressed to figure that one out but at the end one of the the um, panel members in, in Congress said you know what what are you really worried about and that's where my response was, if you really want to look at what the biggest systemic risk is to not only the investment management business, but to business overall, it's cyber. And you know, again, those of you who are involved in the technology side of things in any way, shape, or form have seen this uh, up close and personal. Um, Again, you know, I'll go back to that you know, statistic. I, I said you know, in 2000, we were just getting our online capabilities going. We had a few hundred thousand people registered. Today, 98% of all transactions done at Vanguard are done online. And so, and, and we're not alone. You know, all of the big investment firms would say the same thing. So this has become a virtual marketplace. And obviously, when you then back that, you know, link that to all the infrastructure and all the, you know, whether it's the, the markets themselves or the custodians and so forth, it's this vast electronic network that makes everything go. And so the cyber thing is really a big deal. And, you know, I, I'm, you know, it's, it, it's sad to say, but there are a lot of bad guys out there. Right. You know, it started out as um, sort of hacktivists, people who kind of wanted to cause trouble for fun. And then it turned into sort of cyber crime gangs. And you know, Eastern Europe was particularly notorious for this. And then it's gotten into nation states now. And you know, the nation states aren't necessarily all that interested in um, you know, running off with your money out of one of our accounts. But they maybe are interested in disrupting the system. And so you actually can, you know, there are tools in place where you can monitor this and you can actually see this stuff going on. And in our security operations center, you know, I'll go down and sit there periodically and you'll see literally thousands of attacks every day. Interesting. And so it's, it, it really is, I, I think, a, 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 the most uh, important issue. And, you know, forget mutual funds and, you know, investments and banking products and so forth and raise it up to the grid, you know, to think about just all how reliant we are on you know basic technology today as a society so all businesses could be affected by this so that's sort of the bad news part of it so what's the good news is I actually think um, people are really paying a lot of attention to this so you know within um, the Treasury Department so the Secretary of Treasury the, the actually the under Secretary of Treasury, number two in Treasury, has been leading a task force uh, on behalf of the government around cyber, that really pulling all the government agencies together. And this is actually, we, we've actually seen some positive progress there. And so we, we, we applaud that, we wanna see even more. You know, within our industry at least, um, there's tremendous cooperation. So, you know, Vanguard and Fidelity and T. Rowe Price and so forth, I mean, we go head to head every day and we're really, you know, we want to compete. But when it comes to cyber, there's no competition. And um, I, I was at a, a session uh, with one of my peers from Fidelity recently and I, I had to thank him for, we, I was sitting in our security operations center and literally a phone rang and it was Fidelity saying, we're undergoing a certain type of attack, you guys should be prepared and here's what we're seeing. 
I know we've repaid the favor many, many times over as well, but there's this tremendous um, uh, network. Um, our industry trade association actually thought this was so important, we formed a group, a, a committee of the Investment Company Institute uh, devoted solely to cyber, and we bring together all the chief um, information security officers on a very regular basis. And again, inside, you know, when they start talking about this stuff, competitive things just go by the wayside. It's all about making sure that our investors, um, our assets are being safeguarded. So I, I, I do think um, there's, and I, and I know other industries are doing similar things. So I think it's, it, it really needs that kind of attention. I would tell you, I don't know how many, um, it's hard for us to see you guys with all the lights here, but I don't know how many investors I, we have out there, but um, if I asked how many of you, for whoever you deal with, um, are employing two-factor authentication, I'm gonna guess I would not get a huge response. And I would tell anybody, at least if you deal with us, sign up for two-factor authentication. And what's two-factor authentication is when you log in and you put your password on a separate device, you receive an email, uh, a text with a code, and you have to enter that code within 10 minutes, or you're, you're not allowed to access your account. It may sound a little bit like it's creating friction, but I'm telling you from a security standpoint, it's the single biggest thing you can do to prevent hacking in the retail consumer financial space. A lot of the banks already offer this. You know, we, we were one of the first investment firms to do it. And I would tell you, for any place that offers it, um, personally, I would sign up for it. Uh, I think you will get to even better technologies over the next five to 10 years, but right now it's as good as it gets. We've got a few minutes anyway. Do we have any questions from the audience for Bill? Yes, my question is around cybersecurity. Uh, my name is Larry Stone. I'm the elected county assessor of Santa Clara County, California, which you know as Silicon Valley. Uh, I have... Uh, 1.9 million constituents. We have 500,000 plus property tax payers in my county. Uh, I have an assessment role of $385 billion. And we maintain, for example, 233,000 social security numbers. So cyber security is very important and we spend a lot of money on that. I'm gonna increase your sleeplessness now because <laughs> last week, a junior member of my IT staff in 10 seconds, uh, hacked two what we call hard passwords, 14 digits and so forth, in less than 10 seconds. I've never seen anything like it. I didn't realize that we were that exposed uh, by a junior member of a staff that could get into two very hard passwords in less than 10 seconds. So that's what's ahead, and it scares the hell out of me. Well, you know, um, you just increased my sleeplessness by <laughs> at least several hours. I want to thank you for that. Um, I, 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 you know, by the way, I do, the, the, the problem that you have, and I, I actually think your story really does illustrate this, is that the capabilities and the technology, if you will, of, you know, breaking encryption is progressing as fast or faster than our ability to create, you know, even safer situations. So, you know, a lot of what we're doing is trying to figure out how to wall it off. Um, you know, so you'll hear things like network segmentation, you know, much more rigorous access management programs and so forth. But, you know, your, your point is correct. There's, there's no perfect solution here. It gets back to culture, and if you don't lay off your people, you probably don't have that problem. <laughs> 